the Coach V Show here on Island City, where the beach meets the streets. Tonight, we are going to be featuring Brother Devita Hufanga, who is the host and the co-host of a monthly radio show that's called Toko Football Focus. Came all the way from the islands and from Uptonga and migrated to San Diego and ended up in Albany, Oregon. You're going to love this story. And thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Coach V Show, your Hollywood radio show for personal development. And buckle up and take out your notebook, take some notes on what it is your thoughts are that Devita will be sharing. And now a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Whenever it's cold outside and you need a little heat At the game or in a plane, it's comfortable on your feet When it's time for a nap, it's a pillow for your sleep Get your comfy blanket now Get your comfy blanket now Welcome to the Coach V Show your Hollywood radio show for personal development with expert insights and interviews to help you, me, and we work to be our best and live our best life. Offering for your consideration uh, through our featured guests and definitely some of my insights, these success frameworks, behavioral models, and life lessons that if you should find value in them, that you subscribe and deploy all over your life, leadership, and business. Here on the Coach V Show, where iron sharpens iron, together we rise, powered by the Island City Media Group, where the beach meets the streets. Tonight, I am so juiced and pumped to have Brother Devita Hufanga on the Coach V Show, who was born and raised in a small Pacific island of Tonga and the kingdom of Tonga. Hufanga's family moved to the United States back in 1984, where he later joined them in 1989. He met his beautiful wife of 32 years, Tanya, and continued on to them having two boys, TJ and Talanoa. He currently is an employee of Hewlett Packard, going on 31 years, and also the owner of Devita's Flower Farm. And the reason why he's on this show is that Hufanga coaches football at the local high school in Oregon, and he is the co-host of my favorite, one of my favorite programs, the Toko Football Focus. That just sounds good, rolling off the tongue. Radio program on Vaka Dali Folau Radio. And it is a Tongan speaking program about academics, about football, and the recruiting uh, process as well as leadership. Welcome to the Coach V Show. Your boy coming in from Oregon, Devita Hufanga. Devita, malo apito ho ho mau e tau we fiafigoni e. Malo apito, but I love Coach V. Thanks for having me on the show, man. I'm a. Uh, uh, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here. No, the honor is ours, Devita. Devita, tell us your genesis point. I went. I read over your bio, but tell us in more detail. Where are you from? What are you about? Where did you start? Of course, um, born and raised in Tonga. My mom is from uh, uh, Pocatala, Hapai, uh, from the Kawai Ha'ano. And my dad is from uh, the village of Pea, Tonga Tapu. And, uh, <clears throat> but I was born and raised in the, in the main island of uh, Tonga. Uh, and when, like my bio said, but I am currently um, uh, living here in Oregon, Albany, Oregon. Um, I've been here for the last um, 31 years uh, here in the same uh, uh, city. And um, we're about uh, an hour uh, south of Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. about an hour from the coast, uh, Oregon coast and about an hour from the mountain. So we are right in the middle of the, what they call the Mid Valley. Uh, that's where I'm currently at with my family and um, I'm loving it over here, man. <clears throat> Albany, Oregon in the house. Shout out to Albany, Oregon. And, and, and coach, talk to us about 
uh, getting off the plane. So I know you're from the San Diego region, but but where did you fly in? Did you come into LAX? Did you come into Hawaii first? Talk about the first starts and, and landing here in the States. Where was that? So when we left Tonga, we stopped in uh, Pango Pango. Okay. Uh, change plane and we uh, flew into Honolulu, Hawaii. And from Honolulu, Hawaii to uh, uh, Los Angeles and from Los Angeles to San Diego. I mean, these are like all connections. Right. Just, but um, yeah, um, about 25 hours of traveling time, I landed in uh, San Diego. And um, talk about moving from a small village to like a, a, a big city, everything got bigger. Everything got bigger. I remember like, when we landed in Samoa, I was like, man, you know, this is way bigger, you know, than seems bigger anyway than uh, Tonga. Um, and from there to Honolulu, um, it just, everything just seems bigger by the minute for me, man. Talk about culture shock, you know, but, um, right. but yeah, that's the, the, the story about the, the flight, um, how we, uh, uh, we got here. <clears throat> and then talk about like, how does a guy that came from Tonga, flew to Pongo Pongo, right? Landed in LAX, went to San Diego, end up in Albany, Oregon. Talk to us about that, Toko, please. Yeah, um, I think when I met my wife, you know, I know I was kind of trying to figure out, you know, what is this new uh, place I'm in? Because um, it was not what I expected because, you know, we didn't read a book or watch a video uh, to preview the new uh, place we are we're moving to right so but anyway um after a few months you know because i was traveling back <clears throat> um the reason why we moved here in 1984 i was i went back to tonga to finish uh high school um i think that was kind of easy for me to do that because i wasn't ready to uh to make that move but when i met my wife uh in san diego uh she's from actually she's actually from from oregon and we uh, made a, like many other uh, couples, you know, we go to uh, do a road trip. And when we drove up from California to Oregon, and that's when I, I, I saw something was started to kind of, because it was more open over here, was less traffic, even though it's still big, but it's kind of is on my mind about, you know, living in a small town that would um, way better in my mind than, you know, go to handle this city life. Because that was, uh, and that's what Albany, uh, I came here, fall in love with uh, with this place, and ended up finding a job here. And here I am, man, um, I'm here. And I love this small town, it's getting bigger. It's gotten bigger in the last 31 years that I've been here. But um, I'm, I'm used to it now. I think I've lived here, I've lived here longer than anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but talk about I mean the, the being in your uncomfort zone, coming from Tonga, and you and I have had a two-hour discussion upon our first meeting. I was just intrigued, so intrigued about just hearing your insights. Right, I mean, you went to San Diego, a very intimidating place for someone who's come from a small island, small village. But in your mindset, you were talking about how you were searching for something. You wanted to go somewhere where you could be you and find you. Talk us through that process, please, Devita. Yeah, and I think that's uh, <clears throat> in, in, in that process, you know, uh, I was living with my parents at the time, and I felt like that I needed to know more about myself and figure out, uh, I now know that I'm here, but what is my purpose here? I think yeah, that's yeah. what I, so on the road trip, I remember like packing my hand, my backpack and throwing a car and I told my parents that my, uh, <clears throat> my fiance and I were gonna be going on a road trip. Right. But in the back of my mind, it was like, I needed to go somewhere to, um, I just feel like that if I go somewhere, you know, I need to understand what am I supposed to do or why, or what, am, you know, and it was very confusing, man, but uh, it was easy to do because I have nothing to lose. You know? Right, right, right. Say that I, again. You got nothing to what? You got nothing, I, I to, got nothing to lose as far yeah. as like, I didn't have anything. I, I didn't have any foundation. Remember my story. I didn't go to, to school here. 
Right. Never need college education, so there's nothing. So I figured that I'm just gonna learn on the, as I'm going through, uh, just moving forward. And that's, there was a part when I when I found this place, and I then immediately I thought I'm gonna get married, I'm gonna have kids, and looks like this would be a safer place for me to raise my kids. Mm. So I started thinking, you know, like about my my family, my my you know. This is before it happens, but I started to think about okay, a small town. I'm kind of comf- be very comfortable with this uh, with this town. If I if my wife and I have kids over here, I think then I would like to. I, I look around and I, I can see it. You know, it's okay. You know, to be in a small town, uh, but that's why uh, I ended up over here and fall in love with this place because I was like, and you know, um, no regrets on my part. You know, uh, to make that move. Was tough to uh, to leave the parents, but what we did, you know, we have the parents come visit us more, so we yeah. were going back and forth. But I I knew that I I need to live here because now I have my I found a job that I like, and um, I like the area, and I started to make friends. I mean, we come to a place that I didn't know anybody here, but you know we are we're Polynesian, and man, we tongue as we can talk to anybody, you know, mm. and and. Um, we ask for help, and also uh, I think the the language, uh, uh, English is my second language. I think it helps me to be in an environment where no Tongans around here, so I can start to struggle through learning how to um, to learn a little bit more and faster uh, through my work and through the people I was um, friends with. <clears throat> Absolutely, that that was my deal. Coming here at four years old, living back east, uh, being in the English as a second language class with a bunch of Puerto Ricans, Cubans, because I was back east. I had to learn how to swim or drown in terms of the language. I need to figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's the same way. And, and so talk about how was it um, now being an adult, uh, being with Finding Tanya and being in Oregon um, and but yet having no Tongans around, what kind? What, what was that experience like? It was an, an adjustment, right? You go from right. being around uh, Tongans all the time, seven days a week, um, lots of Tongan events to attend. To be here and not seeing Tongans for almost a year before right. I you know, go back to San Diego, and um, I think that's that was it's never easy because that's something that I have to learn to adjust to. But I was so busy working all the time, you know, like I think it didn't really, uh, I didn't feel like that I missed a lot of those events because I went from like having a lot of times, you know, to, uh, you know, from doing IATE, you know, and all that kind of stuff seems like you can, you have more time um, to working for, uh, um, a business that you have to be there on, on time and, and work every day. Right. So, <clears throat> but but that's the adjustment was, uh, um, it went well, I think as the year goes on, you know, I think it got easier and easier because I now know more and more friends from work and people just around in a community um, that we do things outside because that's the thing, you don't want to come home and just sit in, in your apartment, you know, by yourself, you know, and and but we started. I started to to do things with people they, um, that I was friends with. Yeah. For example, like we started going fishing. We started going hunting, going to the mountain and try the inner tubing, you know, and stuff like that. So I, I started to do other things that I normally would not have tried if, if right. I didn't move to Britain, right? Yeah. So. <clears throat> and, and, and so talk about like being married, right? Now having uh, two kids. Uh, TJ went to Oregon State, right? Correct. You met yeah. with my guy. Shout out to my dude, uh, Joe Selmalo, yes. um, who was up there in Corvallis. Um, only having maybe one other Tongan that 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 lived in the community that was on, at the university. And Nico. then going yeah. through the recruiting process with both TJ and then, um, you know, Talanoa. And then now you are co-hosting this show. And that's why I wanted to get you on our show is because of your insights of going through that process um, and, and, and in a very positive way and a very humble and res- 
respectful way, but that you guys actually had a plan, you, you became knowledgeable of the process, and now you share that process uh, with the world. And before we even get to that, talk to us about coming from Tonga, living in San Diego, and then transitioning over to, to Oregon and having to become acclimated, find a job. You start, you and Tanya start raising your two boys. They go to college, um, you know, and TJ does his thing. Talanoa does his thing, ends up at USC, now playing with the 49ers. Having gone through the, all that experience and this being a Thursday night after the Sunday that you guys played Miami and where all of us Niner fans, uh, saw Jimmy Garoppolo go down. I mean, you've had such a wealth of experiences. What would your message to the world be? Or for other Tongans that are going through your immigrant experience, what would your message be in, in terms of your message to the world? David? I think uh, the, it's, it's simple, right? I think we all have our own gift, uh, God-given gift. Given gift. Uh, it, it was just, it's very unique to each one of us. How do we actually um, develop that gift? Mm. You know, once we realize that, because sometimes, you know, uh, it's not for me, you know, uh, I should not be trying to develop a gift that is not mine because just because I know somebody or I like somebody, uh, the gift that somebody has, you know, I need to find, we all need to find our own gift in us, within mm. us. And, um, the truth is, is, and it's very different. Everybody's different, you know, like I, my gift is different from my two boys and their, my two boys, uh, they both have their own gift. And, uh, and once we develop that, we, uh, we see what is that gift, if we can actually help somebody else with that gift. Mm. You know, I think that's a simple way I can, uh, my, as far as answer that question, coach is like, uh, identify the gift and sometimes it's not easy, uh, but usually, the way that I look at it is like something that you can do and it doesn't feel like work. Mm. And you, you know, it's something that you can do whenever you have free time, you just keep doing it and you can, you don't have to do it for money, you know? So <clears throat> that's the message as far as uh, I think, and everybody uh, can probably look at the, you know, look at themselves and, and, and ask themselves, what is my gift? What am I spending my time most on? And that's the thing that, that we can start on, is start working on those things because those gifts, man, are very, um, they're very powerful, I think. Real because tough. that was a gift that, was, it wasn't that we didn't come up with that. That was like kind of put on me or put on uh, my son or put on my son's friend. And if we all just do that, I think the happy world, right? I, I think because we're doing something that we love, you know. <clears throat> I agree. I love that. And I talk about that all the time. It's like one of the greatest challenges in life is to figure out our gift and or, or our purpose or what it is that we choose to be our gift, one or the other, right? And then after that, it is really the challenge to give our gift to the world or whether it's the marketplace uh, like for me, um, I've been able to attract a certain value proposition from the marketplace to be paid for what it is that is my gift. Speaking, coaching, training, empowering people. But I love that. And that's a great message. Um, talk about talk about like what, what's your current project. Talk about your radio show and please share with us how can we tune into that show that you're co-hosting and where you're talking about leadership, you're talking about recruitment, the process, in which case uh, you and your wife, Tanya, have been through, and now you want to share that message with the world. Please share your project. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think um, when it's interesting what I'm doing with, uh, with the Talk of Football Focus uh, and that program is once a month, yep. uh, first Tuesday of every month. But how did it come about? Um, talk about a relationship, you know, that got me into high school football, uh, football coaching. Right. And, and you never played. You've never, never played football. I never played football. And that was like, you know, I told the, the, the head coach, 
I never played football. I never, um, I went, I never went to, I didn't go to high school here. I didn't go to college to even understand that. And that's where I met Coach Seamalu because when I was finally the, the, agreed to do that, I called him up and because he was over here at Oregon State and we were already friends, you know, our kids went to the same uh, school and I, and I just happened to be the D-line coach. And Joe is the defensive line coach at Oregon State. So I called right. him and asked for help, which is not um, in our nature as Tongans, you know, we are, sometimes it's not easy to call somebody and ask for help. You know, mm. Sometimes we just pretend like that we know. Or So I basically told him I don't know, but I need his help. And he helped me out. And through that process, um, so I started to hear different things about how to coach. And basically I learned that take it to the high school level. As I was coaching my, uh, my players, of course I'm at home all the time and my kids, you know, we are talking about this kind of stuff. So then kind of get the oldest one interested in uh, football because he was a basketball player. He grew up, loved basketball and I just let him play basketball because I wasn't the dad that was going to force them to do something that they don't want to do. Right. I will, I will let them know, hey, there's an opportunity here to sign up for baseball if you want to sign up. Yeah. yeah. Music, you know, but I didn't, didn't force him. But um, then he decided to um, kind of give it a, a go. And he ended up got a, um, an opportunity to walk on at Oregon State football. Mm -hmm. You know, and I realize it's uh, it's a walk on, you know, but you know, just to uh, for him to to get to that level and experience uh, what it's like to be on the team and be a scout team player and learn the work ethic, what it's like to be a football player, you know, because I think that football has a lot of um, benefits to players as far as life lessons, you know, and. Because you fail there, you teach you to work hard. But anyway, so get him through. The second one came up, and once he decided to um, pursue football, and everything just kind of keep moving faster for at this time for him, because we are already. And we're kinda, talking about Talanoa, yes, David. We're talking about Talanoa. Uh, yeah. So things got kind of moving uh, faster, and uh, he had more opportunities. I think there's, uh, uh, you know just because we kind of familiar with the process. And uh, once he made his decision to attend USC, then he moved on. I was still coaching at the time, uh, his first year, but I decided to step down, you know, and follow him. Now we have to travel to USC to go see, watch his game. Because I didn't want to miss his games and I didn't want to coach the kids in high school during the week and not be there on Friday night for their games. I didn't right. think you know, it was right for me to do that for the kids. Right. So, but that whole process, sorry, to, uh, it's a long story, but I'll make it short. But I always feel like that I have more to, because I realized that why is Tano is the only kid from this area that got a scholarship offer from USC? Right. You know, uh, or even Oregon, Oregon State, um, and I realized that there's a, a, a disconnect between the players and the process and the parents. Mm. So then I decided, I think that um, to do something, because I already saw it in high school, you know, a lot of things that kids uh, did not know as far as fundamental. So I tried to, to, uh, to start a, a, a fundamental camp over here and uh, went in recruited some help from uh, some of my friends and we went to the city and asked them to help so we can come and volunteer and we launched that uh, um, program but then we run into the uh, COVID-19 you know when they cancel all the mm -hmm. program right so that was the first step because I thought you know I can go do something just coach the, the fundamentals for these young kids and hopefully we can prepare them up when they get to high school so they can compete and try to see if they can better improve their films, right? Because coaches, you know, they're more interested in the film as when they first, and you know that coach, you, you want to look at the film, that's your first um, stop, right? To evaluate the film, to uh, see if he's a, a, a good fit, if he has potential before you move to the other stuff. So all those knowledge that I learned and 
that's when, and I, I think that the, the, the program, the radio that I'm on right now, they were doing uh, a program for the, for the village of Bear, the Vaikopuna. They have that once a, once a month, once a week. And they asked me if I, at the host in Hawaii, you know, asked me like, hey, can you just see if Tano can come on? And I said, well, Tano doesn't have enough time to. Right, he busy. <laughs> so then she asked me and I, I feel like I didn't want to come over there to kind of talk because I didn't want the, the audience to think I'm coming over there just to talk about my son, right? But I decided to to, um, to, to go on the show and just kind of answer questions, you know? And after that show, she asked me to come back again the next month. Then uh, we talk, in between that, we talk about, hey, why don't we, we'll do it, but we, I want to see if we can start it, make it, make the show so we can add value to the listeners. And uh, that's how we come up with uh, the name Toco Football Focus. You know, you know Toco is our, our slang for brothers. And because it's our kids that, that I was like trying to, to help. I'm helping kids over here, but I, there's no Tongans over here. Right. So I'm still, and I'm still doing that here in this area uh, in high school level. But then we uh, come up with the idea, we need to talk about academics because what I found that I hear stories like, oh, the kid was really good in football, but he didn't have good grades. So that's where the academic comes in. Football, you know, I said, we, we, we're gonna talk about football. You guys are already a good player, but let's talk about the recruiting process. What right. I know, I can share that with you guys. And also the leadership, you know, I we added that to the, to the show because in football, we always look for the kids to step up and be a leader because the more leaders on the field, mm -hmm. you know, the, the easier for the coaches to, uh, uh, to run the program, right? So academics, football, and leadership is like the three uh, areas that we talk about. And we do that in Tongan. Uh, and I think it's been a year. We, we, since we started, it's a little over a year. Um, and I haven't missed uh, a week because it's very important to me to, to share this knowledge because I feel like that somebody helped me and my family and my kids. And it only makes sense and feels right to me to help somebody else. And you know, if it's only one person, man, then you know, that's it. Because that's the person that really needs it. But hopefully we can multiply that and get more kids, more opportunities. That's phenomenal. Toko Football Focus. I just love that. When you guys sell or sell sweaters and all that as a fundraiser, please put my family down for four. We're, we're, we'll buy we'll buy that that sweater. That just sounds right. Toko Football focus. That's awesome, Devita. Uh, so, so talk about now. Anything else about how, how can people uh, listen into that show? How, how can people tune in? Yeah, the way it works, um, it is uh, Zoom. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not like the the expert in this area, but um, re, you know, if you don't get to uh, listen live, so it's live on Facebook. Okay. And the radio station, some people, they listen, they have a, they, they call in, I think there's a number they can, like for the, our parents, right, older generation. Yep, yep, yep. They used to, they used to flip phone, you know, they yeah, just yeah, 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 yeah. give them, that they make it easier for them to listen through their phone. Okay. Um, but the Facebook is like Vake Tarifolau Radio. So Vake, V-A-K-E. -E. Tali Folau, T A L I F O L A U. Correct. Okay. Uh, and so the substation is the, uh, um, the Vaikopuna is like the, uh, is under Vaikopuna radio is under uh, Vake Tali Folau. So the main station is Vake Tali Folau. Then every program has a different name for it. Okay. So for all the listeners out there, if you could search on Facebook, it's Vake Talifolau under Vaikapuna Radio. Yes? Yes. Yeah, we can figure that out. And then 
If you could see a link, if you could just send it to me, I will make sure to post that on so that people can just hit the link if there is one. And then I will look for it and, and the staff at ICMG, Island City Media Group, we'll, we'll see if we can find that link and we'll put it under in the description below. How's that sound, Tevita? Good? Yeah, sounds good, yeah. So I think I have all the links to all the programs, so I'll send you, how many do you want? I don't know, it's up to you. No, just one link, oh, just okay. so one link so that weekly, if people can just hit that link, then you could get more listeners. Sounds good, yeah. Yeah, so that'd I'll be great. The, 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 the one we just did this week. That'd so be I'll great. Yeah. That'd be great, and then people can have an example for that, and then they can find you uh, monthly when, when you do that show. And then, so let's let's go shout outs. Let's go shout outs, Devita. Who would you like to shout out here on the Coach V Show? I just want to shout out to my uh, um, the mentors I call Coach mm. Joe Samalo. Um, yeah, Joe, um, I love you, man. Uh, if you're listening to this show, man, I appreciate all the help, and he knows it, man. Uh, he remember all the um, the time that I come over there, came over there, and look for um, and ask for help. So Coach Jose Amalu and his assistant at the time, uh, uh, Coach Inoke Brechtefield, he was also a big uh, uh, mentor to my uh, coaching high school football. Yep. Anybody else? Any other shout outs? And I was just shout out to my wife, man. I was going to say yeah. thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Tanya, for all the support. You know, uh, you know, this is a thing that sometimes it takes a, a lot of time away from the family sometimes right but uh she was right behind it um letting me uh I learn something new and but it helps me to grow as a person because I'm, i was doing something that was very uncomfortable to me because i never played football i mean can you imagine talking to uh to kids about football and teach them but i never played football anyway uh just my uh, wife time here for all the support thank you no, that's awesome. That that is awesome. And so you mentioned your parents, Devita. But what what are the what are your parents' names? Because my my parents shout out to Mel and Semisi Tuivai. I know you guys are listening. That's going to be their first question. But what's the what's the name of his parents? You know how our people is. So can you introduce your parents too? Of course, of course. Um, to my mom, uh, her first name is Mele uh, Forwetti Kufanga, and my uh, my dad. Uh, Viviani Hufanga. Yeah, they're both here in Oregon living with me, man. Uh, I told them uh, about this show. Uh, I was going to do this show, so I will definitely let them know too because they don't have a way to listen to this show like, you know, the other program because they have yeah, yeah. a the retiring, but, uh, but I appreciate it, man. Yeah. No, that's easy because I will just send you a link. We'll send you a link to the YouTube channel and the Spotify on podcast, the podcast, and they can either listen or they can listen and watch it on YouTube. That's easy. Sounds good. We'll get, yeah. we'll get that done for you. And and, and then lastly, what, what what is the final final you have before before we end this? Just on being on the show, your thoughts for people, anything like that. Your, your, any any last words about what football has brought to your life? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, to me, you know, football um, has opened up a lot of doors. And thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. You know, oh, that's uh, easy, but easy. Because, yeah. um, to come here and just talk about um, something that seems like it is part of my life every day now. Right, and, right. And and football, um, the lessons that... that um, that I learned from football or my kids learned from football, you know, it's more than just football, man. It's beyond football, what I'm thinking about, the life lesson, you know, and uh, I just think that it's important for uh, our listeners, your listeners, you know, to, to know that, that um, sometimes football is not for everybody to go to the highest level. Mm. <laughs> say that again, David, say that one more time for the parents that are listening. Yeah, football is not for everybody to reach the highest level. Everybody will play football at some point. That's where they're supposed to stop. Mm. And a few more go to the next level and they stop there. And those that make it to the highest level, it will stop for them as well. As right. So it's not going to be there forever. But to be okay with 
how far football um, and look at look at the lesson that we're going to learn from the from the sports more than just going over there for one reason. I think sometimes we look at football and we start thinking about money only. Money is good, but that's not the only thing that football can uh, teach us. Um, the life lessons, I'm, I'm, coach, you know this, you and I uh, may be on the same page of the life lessons that football gave the kids. Right. Um, it's incredible. And I think that it's gonna, it's gonna help help them, you know, in the long run, as far as like, how to keep a commitment, you know, how to communicate, how to be a leader, how to be, um, how to manage your time, all those things. I'm just touching on a few things. Right, right. Um, but uh, those are things that are very important to, 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 to life, to real life outside of, you know, when they leave football and kids struggling, uh, they, they, they struggle with that kind of stuff because they are learning, right? But that's why coaches are there to continue to encourage them, hey, just keep moving forward. Because one day when you're done, you're going to reflect back on all these skills that we are we are learning here in football together. Even myself as a coach, man, I, I, I learned that too. Um, or even learn to do it better. Maybe I, I learned it already, but how can I do it better now, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And think about this, uh, also the, the thing about everything changed. And sometimes it's really hard for, for us people to, to accept that. But can you adjust to it? It's like football is like that. There's yeah. like first quarter adjustment because the other team is winning. You know, defensively, we got to do something different, right? So we all have to, to be able to adjust and, uh, and just keep moving forward, coach. Keep moving forward. Yeah, I love that. So shout out to the Concrete Jungle, who's also on Island City. Shout out to my boy down in SoCal. He he promoted a deal where uh, you were with Tua Tangavailoa's parents, and Tua was walking by. And I was like, man, there's David Tom. I'm about to have David on the show. And he's over here meeting Tua on the Concrete Jungle. And he and he was promoting that, you know, uh, really just shouting out the Toko Uso movement. You know, I love that. I love that. I love how your show is, you know, Toko Football Focus. And then everybody out there that subscribes to this harmony and peace between the Polynesian people, because the streets are what the streets are. They're they're violent. And that's just, uh, you know, one of the byproducts of the upbringing that we have here in the States that these gang things happen. But then I saw you on there and I wanted to finish off the show with this. Like, how how does it feel? as a parent to have your son playing at a very high level, right? Like you're saying, okay, he's playing at a high level. He's playing for the 49ers, starting safety, doing a great job. But then other parents of their child, Tua Tangavailoa, and is having a, a historic season, Tua is for the Miami Dolphins, and they just couldn't get things going against San Francisco, and San Francisco's defense was great. After, like you said, change and making adjustments. After Jimmy Garoppolo, after the first drive, gets hurt mm -hmm. and then those guys defense steps it up leadership everything that you're talking about was a culmination of those examples that you were giving all in one game but how did it feel like when two is like running away and then the mom and dad was like whoa 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 wait two real quick uh he, he, here's uh talanoa's dad tevita right i mean i just think that that's some good vibes like like football has taken your family not just Talanoa, but it is a family experience. Come on, sitting in the, in the stands at USC, that is historical. It is memorable. It is legacy, like all those things. How did that feel, that moment that I got a chance? And I sent it to you via text, right? It's yes. like, how, how did that moment feel like? And talk to the listeners about being on the field, 49ers, amazing autumn day in Santa Clarita, California at the Niners Stadium, the parents of the, the team you just beat are so gracious and nice to you and even stops their son and goes, hey, look, hey, meet the vita. Well, well, that's just awesome, right? Yeah. Um, first of all, I'll, I'll give a shout out to uh, Jesse Sapolo. Oh, the godfather right there. Oh, because yeah. I see, um, I see Jesse every home game when we go down to, uh, uh, to the home game. 
And he's the one that introduced me to tours, parents. That parents, day. okay, okay. So right before that moment happened, we just uh, finished taking some pictures on the other side of the field. And, um, but it's, it, it was a blessing. To be honest with you, it was a blessing mm. meet uh, tours, parents, and also uh, tour when he was leaving the field. Great people, great people, great player. And, you know, to, um, to say that, man, you know, um, and we ended up, you know, just to, to for him to stop it. Those moments, those kids sometimes, they're like, the players, are, they, they focus, right? Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, look yeah. Like, but he, he could hear his dad calling his name to turn around and come and meet me. Yeah. And uh, that says a lot about um, a tour. Uh, and, and I thank his parents for, for, for that, you know, because to me, they didn't have to do that. Yeah, no doubt. He just but, lost um, the game. He didn't have a great game like Tua. He didn't have a Tua game, yeah. right? No, but and this then is for Tua before, to is, turn was, around like that. Yeah. Right. All of that. Go ahead. Go ahead. And that was before the game, so they were just yeah, yeah. The warm up, right? And uh, but um, but I, I'll say that you know it's like a um, it was a great moment, and and after that you know the parents we all sat together, my wife and my you know family because we all sat together and watched the game, and I you know if you watch the game, the first play when two or throw their touchdown, and then run it, and I went up and congratulate the dad. I mean. We all sat together watching the game, and we watched my son try to chase down their player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, and right. That's a, and that's the cool thing about that. You know, um, sports teach us a lot of great things, man. You know, uh, let the kids, they go play. It doesn't affect how we look at them, how we look at each other, you know. Mm. Because, Say that again, Devita. Say yeah. that again. Uh, the great things about sports, you know, because we let the kids go play. And what happens on the field, it doesn't affect who we are on the sideline and how we look at each other. We should be happy for each other when they do good things. If you want to give out good vibes, man, good vibes Real will come talk. back. You know, but I remember just going up over there and uh, Tua's uh, best friend was over there as well. And I just tell them, I said, hey, man, this is, this is fun. You guys just like run their play and broke down um, the defense and score, you know, but... Uh, Hey, you know, it's a long, it was a long game, but uh, what an honor! What an honor, man, to uh, uh, to meet them, and we, you know, we are hoping to uh, stay and continue um, to stay in, in in contact, you know. But based on sports, you know, those are the kind of stuff that happens in sports, man. You develop friendship and uh, um, have a relationship with people that you never thought that you. Uh, gonna have but i but i give it a shout out yeah jesse support thank you man jesse. appreciate you yeah not only is that dude big time person um because i think i think maybe his son jesse was jesse's son there with kavanaugh uh playing yeah. o-line at, he oregon, was, state he, at when, oregon state when 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 tj was there yes he was over so here i remember with... so i i met i met jesse short um just shortly i think he was at edison high school in huntington beach Okay. Um, and the head coach's son from there. So shout out, shout out to the radio crew. We're way over on our time, but we're going we're gonna to keep this show going because we got some good vibes going here. <laughs> we bought Talanoa over here like we're drinking kava and we're just hanging out. Right, so thank right. you to Island City Media Group for continuing just to let the, the show ride. But I just love that because not only is Jesse a legendary NFL player in his own right, but the ambassadorship, like when you talk about leadership, right? Like Jesse's not a self-promotion guy. He's all about the brand. He's all about Niner Nation. He's all about creating good vibes, introducing people that don't know each other from other sides. And then really for me, what I really love to see is that Tua and his family has gone through so much criticism over the last few years because Tua didn't have a lot of tools, right? He didn't have all these. Now he's having an historic season. So it's great to see those guys get to the other side. Yeah. Um, it was a struggle against the Niner defense, but everybody's struggling against the Niners defense right now, mm -hmm. right? So thank you so much for sharing that. And then putting in correct context, because I thought that was after the game, the video clip that was on Concrete mm -hmm. Jungle, shout out to Concrete Jungle. But you painted the context where this is really in the beginning, before the game even started that Tua would come back and, and say hello to you. Talk to us about like, like your wife 
and, and then just like the experience you guys are having, what does she say? What, what's like the role that she plays in this football journey? Because my wife knows. I mean, when it's football, it's football. I mean, it's all go. No church, right? No family time. When you're a Division One football coach and you're all about football, I mean, even flag football. We, we only practice twice a week, but, you know, Junior and I practice all the time. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. we're out there five days a week. He's the quarterback. And then yeah, he's a yeah, DB, yeah. so he has to know the plays. Talk about, uh, you know, to and then to me, the number one factor in my overall success as a success as a human being and as a professional, one is definitely before high, before high school ended was my parents. Nobody, nobody had a bigger influence. But since then in my professional life, no one has had a greater impact on me, Debbie, than my wife. Talk right. to me about... Your choice, your choice in spouse. So for all the young folks out there, do not be casual in your relationships. Come on, Tevita, right? And That's talk true. about the role of your spouse, the support, and, and really your guys' journey together to, to, to raising two championship young men in, in TJ and in Talanoa. You know, um, absolutely. Um, she's the number one fan for our football kids, you know, for both our sons, you know, um, no doubt. Mm. Um, she understands, I think she, a mom has more patience with the, with, uh, with the football and kids, you know, and stuff like that. We as dads, sometimes we are impatient, you know, about like- Say that again, community. say that again, please, Devita. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think the mom, she, so Tanya, my wife, Tanya, she's very patient with, football and you know just let the kids let the game go um like it's supposed to where as a dad i'll speak for myself but i'm a me dad. too you're yeah. speaking for me too say it sometimes we are, i'm very impatient with uh, yes sir with the game. we'll talk and you know like you want your kid to do every play to be perfect but you know same thing we forget you know to uh to back off a little bit but for her you know she can sit over there and just like okay this is okay this, you know, and I, I think I learned from here uh, and try to to see the game from a different perspective too, instead of just looking at my eyes, thinking, "Yes, sir." This is the only way, right? And um, <clears throat> also, the uh, there are some things that she does that I can't do. You know, uh, I think you know they're not football related. It's just like managing the time and the family activities, busy work, my man, right? Um, I think sometimes we uh, don't think about their role, how important it is. But I think I, I'll say this: um, without her, I think there's a lot of things that have been missed along the way. Because, mm. like I mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier the support that I get from from her. You know, because I was like maybe because I was eager to learn the sports, you know. And uh, but remember, I didn't force my kids to play football. They picked football because they love to play the sports. You know, if I, I think if I were to force them to play a sport, you know, honestly, I'll probably like tell them to play rugby. Ah, real talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're be familiar like, with it. It's something you know, something you love already, right? Yeah. Come on. But you're not gonna let them, you know, pick the sports and like both of them never played baseball. Interesting, you know, like um, I know a lot, a little bit about, uh, it's this kind of similar because we play cricket in Tonga. Uh, and, you know, and I'm thinking like, maybe I like cricket, you know, maybe they'll pick baseball, but I never play. So, but anyway, I'm going off um, there, but you know, the, the one, my wife uh, can say thank you uh, to her enough for, for the work that she, uh, she does for, for the family and support us, you know, this football thing, man. So. <clears throat> Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, Tevita. For those of you that normally tune in, hey, thank you so much for tuning in. We're, we're on tonight featuring Brother Tevita Hufanga, who, who hosts and co-hosts the show um, Toko Football Focus, T-O-K-O -O Focus. And, and, and I love everything it is that he's doing. I wanted to feature him. And what days does your show come on? It's the first uh first tuesday of every month and first tuesday and um month. we go live uh on the west coast at 11 o'clock at night at night 11 11 p 
PM, PM. PST, which depending on, on the time is eight o'clock Hawaii. Yeah, that's the yes, reason yeah. why, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They started uh, the, the radio, uh, the radio program was started in Hawaii. So eight o'clock was perfect time for, for yep, them. Yeah, I see why. No, that's awesome. So, and thank you so much, Devita, for coming on the show, sharing your success, your insights, your journey uh, with us all. We really appreciate that. And, and for all of you that are listening, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Coach V Show here on Island City, where the beach meets the streets. And for Devita and I, it is not just for the sake of your success that we do these shows or talk about and share our knowledge it is that we have. Just for your consideration, we're not trying to tell anybody what to do, think, say, or be, right? But just really for the sake that you be your best. In doing so, you realize the best of your abilities and that everything and anything that you dream, work, and pray for can be achieved. This is how your boy Devita, Coach Devita Hufanga up in Oregon, and your boy... Coach V lives all about faith and family, grateful for God's amazing grace. I'll see you next month on Motivation Monday here on the Coach V Show, broadcast from Hollywood, California's Dash Radio Studios, and powered by the Island City Media Group, where the beach meets the streets. Until next month on Motivation Monday, from your boy Tevita, your boy Coach V, one love, mad respects, live it. Choo-hoo! Thank you. Choo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs>